Hello everyone, welcome to your next class. In these set of sections, we're usually gonna go deeper into a model. I'm gonna give you like a step-by-step -step example of how the whole process is working, usually with some sort of hand drawing. Uh, we're gonna talk about multi-feature linear regressions using machine learning in this class, as well as talk about a couple of concepts that are generally useful for and, and used in almost every other machine learning model that you'll encounter, at least in some degree. Uh, so first, what are you going to learn? You're going to learn about the parameter called the learning rate. This is a really important feature of uh, machine learning models. You're going to learn about this thing called gradient descent, which is a process of how, like a machine learning process of how it goes in and tries to uh, adjust certain parameters as it's learning to like build your regression line, for instance. And then we're going to put this all together and show you an example of a multiple feature near regression kind of by hand as I as I show you how the how the formula works and what's going on. So first let's go over these definitions. First off, what is learning rate? Learning rate is used in basically every machine learning model. As a machine learning model is taking in your data, it's adjusting parameters at any given point. And how it's doing its adjustments, it's step by step uh, movement around these parameters is determined by the learning rate. If something goes wrong and it has an error function that it's adjusting and up, uh, updating and manipulating uh, the steps in terms of how refined the learning, uh, the, the, the change in parameters is occurring is related to this thing called learning rate. And it's important to um, be familiar with how uh, learning rate influences how your machine learning model is working. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about local and global maxima slash minima when we're talking about um, gradient descent specifically, which is all related to how the learning rate is going. Uh, next, gradient descent is a, is a formula. It's a method that uh, takes a that evaluates how accurate or how uh, how the, the results of a cost function and a, a execution that we talked about before uh, and sees how, how costly that specific uh, formula or that iteration was. And if it's greater or worse than what it was before, it uses derivatives to compare the effect of change across uh, different models that it's testing, different like linear regression lines that it's checking out. And in order for it to land on the best linear regression line, it's gonna use this process of gradient descent to try and minimize error as quickly as possible. So um, when we talk about learning rate, uh, I'm gonna switch over to some drawing uh, and then we're gonna show you what learning rate is and how that's all working as well as gradient descent uh, through a couple of formulas. So let's move into that now. Okay, as you see here, first off what we have is um, our function for how to, uh, for, for learning within our linear regression model. This is what we're going to use to have multiple features, more than just like one independent variable, uh, to uh, create our multi-dimensional like linear regression. So what this first thing here is, this, this symbol is theta, okay? This is a symbol that we use to like describe the, the weights that we apply to a specific um, to a specific factor or feature within uh, while we are uh, creating our, our, our line, uh, our regression line. So this first one here, theta zero, is usually our intercept. So we would set theta of zero to a specific number. Let's say this graph here has a scale of like uh, five and five, right? And let's say we, we wanted to see uh, what the mean squared error of drawing this line would be as opposed to like this line, okay? Uh, the theta zero would be where we are uh, placing our intercept, like where, at what point should this be moving up and down and how is that influencing our squared error, okay? The next feature here, and actually I should actually put, you know, an N or an I, I'll put, I'll put, um, I'll put N here for now, is let's say we have our uh, diabetes example where we had BMI, uh, age, and weight, or height. 
we could effectively make a bunch of different thetas, theta, oh, theta one being for BMI with X one, uh, as well as a theta two for age with X one and so on and so forth. And we, if we have a machine learning model that can adjust each of these thetas and determine what um, combination of these weights along with the X value from the data that we have, um, optimizes our mean or minimizes our mean squared error, uh, then maybe we can find a better, a better, more accurate linear regression line. So rather than just having one parameter like we would in our typical linear regression, we're optimizing mean squared error for MX plus B where M is just, you know, uh, one variable, um, one, one dimension, we can turn M into multi -dimension, uh, many dimensions and have different weights for each of these specific uh, independent variables. So maybe BMI is twice as important as age. So the weight and like, BMI is like completely correlated with, with our measure. So maybe this weight of theta one is one and because age is, you know, half as, half as correlated to uh, diabetes, it might be 0.5 here um, and so on and so forth. But in the end, this is this combination of this um, theta zero intercept as well as our combination of theta weights with our X data gives us a predicted Y, okay? And then essentially what we end up doing is running our mean squared error as a cost function with those different weights. So um, what we could see then is if we adjust the parameters of theta, maybe maybe we have, you know, this combination has, a, has different weights here and let's say let, for an arbitrary theta value for zero to two and this will be, you know, I don't know what the actual mean squared error with this would be specifically, but um, if let's say we are adjusting our theta weights in some sort of predictable manner, we're like increasing some things and decreasing others. And we want to reduce our mean squared error because we want our line to be as close as possible. So let's say this is what happens so that as we're adjusting our theta, we're seeing that our mean squared error is dropping. And then we adjust things in a weird way. Some other things change. Uh, and then we slowly start to drop down until we get to here. So what is going on is as we are adjust with using machine learning, as we are adjusting these theta parameters in our linear model, um, we are, you know, kind of tracking the results. And we find that and our, our goal is to minimize mean squared error, get this line as tight to the points as possible. So as we're adjusting these theta parameters, what might be happening is that, you know, we're trying a bunch of different lines. We're trying this, 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 and then it comes to here and then it starts to go back up again. And so what you're seeing in that pattern is when we first started, it had a very high mean squared error. Uh, but we started to adjust parameters and it was starting to get closer and closer. And then we had this little uh, little flatting, flattening here, okay? And what was going on in this, or with this flattening is that maybe we found a pretty good, um, uh, uh, you know, mean squared error, but there's a better one out there. And because we're adjusting just slightly, uh, it appears that, um, things are, you know, we're not getting closer. So as we, if we continue to adjust our parameters, we might see that over time, it gets a little bit larger and then it starts to go down and down. So what is going on here? Uh, basically what I'm trying to suggest to you is uh, a couple of concepts. First off, the amount of adjustment that we are making from point to point is our learning rate. It's how, how often we are checking our mean squared error. So we could technically have more or less of these circles to the point where um, we might even miss, um, I'm gonna back up here a little bit, so that we might even miss, if we had like a larger learning rate, we might even miss that little dip over there and kind of just go straight to something like this, all right? So that is how learning rate can influence uh, your results. Now, um, how do we, uh, how do we like, what, what is this thing here called? This is called a local minima. And what that means is, is like, it's almost like um, it appears that this might be where 
uh, the machine learning model has found the optimal solution, but if we did a little bit more analysis, because it starts to grow from here, we, we, if we stopped here, we might assume that it would continue to go up like that. But if we, by continuing to adjust our parameters, we realize that in fact, like it was, it was doing a good job at finding a line, but there was a better line out there. And it was just that transition point between the two that made it appear that it wasn't. So we call this here a local minima. And how we get around dealing with these local and global minima is using something called gradient descent. So how these, how these uh, theta parameters are adjusted is that we take a look at this kind of cost function line and we um, take derivatives of, of, the, of the results. And the derivatives essentially give you the slope or like acceleration or the effect that uh, that the parameter change is having on the model at any given point. And what the gradient descent model can do is determine, okay, well, if I increased these parameters and there was a drop in uh, mean squared error, I should maybe try and continue to increase. Uh, and if it starts to increase in another way, uh, decrease because of my increase, maybe I should uh, continue to refine here or you know, uh, look a little bit farther out. So that's basically what gradient descent is trying to do. It's looking at the dynamics of this change in the cost function and making a decision on how to adjust uh, parameters according to, a, to the learning rate, according to like the step size. Okay, there's a lot more that we could spend learning about how gradient descent is working, like the real math behind it, but it's pretty complicated. I need to teach you a bit of calculus and linear algebra. So I'm hoping that um, this is, we can leave it at that uh, and, and move on to more of how this, this thing works in code. So um, that is basically how I wanted to explain what was going on with multiple feature linear regression as well as learning rate and gradient descent. So um, what the product of this then is it allows us to have multiple features for our x-axis, our independent variable that can adjust and change and determine the weights for uh, predicting our dependent variable, which are the blue dots in here. And why that's important is because linear regression isn't, standard linear regression isn't that great at figuring out, uh, having a method in order to do this. And it's hard to interpret. So machine learning is really interesting in that you can do these kind of like, even simple um, statistical analyses using uh, more kind of um, optimized computer uh, methodology. So um, let's wrap up, guys. What did we learn today? Today we learned kind of the how the how the guts of a machine learning with multiple linear uh, with multiple linear regression is working. I taught you the concept of learning rate, which is almost like step size for adjusting parameters for adjusting learning. Uh, you know the parameters that influence the cost function in your model. And we talked about how the dynamics of gradient descent are working, and that uh, very lightly that it's like comparing the rate of change between uh, cost function, uh, like the, in the cost function and determining how it should move around adjusting parameters.